I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Are you ready to have your mind blown? So Jenny Thomas, the wife of right-wing corrupt Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's considered royalty within the MAGA Republican base. She's the CEO of her own conservative lobbying firm. And now she's combined her unlimited access to GOP politicians and dark money groups with QAnon religious zealotry. I mean, she's essentially one of the high priestesses of QAnon. And Denver Riggleman, former Republican, former Freedom House Caucus member, knows more about this than anyone. You're about to see the secrets of Ginny Thomas, the wife of right-wing Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who is equally as corrupt and disturbing. Watch this. Hey, everybody. Denver Riggleman here, former congressman, former GOP congressman from Virginia, New York Times bestselling author of The Breach and the former senior technical advisor for the January 6th committee, which is why I'm talking today, because a favorite person of mine popped up in the news, and that's who I believe is the high priestess of the GOP based on her marriage to Clarence Thomas, and that is my good friend, Jenny Thomas, or Virginia Thomas, as she is known. I want to talk about her because of the stories that dropped about her and Leonard Leo and their ability to leverage Citizens United and the money that she was taking already back then when you talk about Harlan Crow and some big donors who wanted to fund these new organizations that Jenny was creating with some of her favorite conservative friends. So what's interesting to me, you know, after seeing the text messages based on the fact that it was our team that first identified the text messages and confirmed that they were from Jenny Thomas, and I think I was probably the first to read the text messages outside of Jenny and Mark, which meant that I did have to drink bourbon based on how crazy they were. I wanted to talk today about the first seven days of the election between November 3rd and November 10th, and to explain that not only is Jenny Thomas the high priestess of the GOP, but she just might also be high priestess for QAnon. Now, there's a lot of text messages, 29 in total, as many of you know. 21 were sent from Jenny Thomas to Mark Meadows. Mark Meadows replied to eight of them. Some of them are pretty insane. But it was the first one that really grabbed my attention and really um, highlighted the crazy conspiratorial beliefs of Jenny, but also highlighted her, say, comfort level with talking directly to the chief of staff to the president of the United States about how to overturn an election or what was about to happen based on some pretty crazy stuff. So I'm going to do the first seven days. That's why I'm going to call this Jenny Thomas part one. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. If I try to do all the text messages, this might be a five hour Midas Touch Network production. So let's jump right into it. First text message was November 5th. Now remember the election was November 3rd. So you're talking about two days later, things were starting to fall out and people were starting to realize that Donald Trump had lost. So Jenny Thomas decided it was time for her to put her best foot forward on Stop the Steal and send a text message to Mark Benos based on some things she had found out through her own research. So let's read that text really quickly. And i um, We're going to actually have some fun with it, so here we go. I hope everybody's ready for this. Hope you're sitting down. Hope you have your favorite adult beverage. Now, it could be non-alcoholic, but I definitely hope that you're not sleep-deprived because this could get a little nuts. So here's what she wrote on November 5th. Remember, two days after the election on November 3rd of 2020. said, I hope this is true. Now, this is Jenny to Mark. Never heard anything like this before or even a hint of it. Possible? Question marks. Trump sting with CIA Director C. Pachenik the biggest election story in history, a seven-minute video, which I have. Dr. Steve Pachenik's info, and then she has in parentheses, who has very good intel context, through his 5 November interview, and then it actually has the link, which everybody I think can go to, actually, if, if you really want to see it. It says, the QFS blockchain, which is the quantum financial system, right? by the way, folks, if you need to look that up, The QFS blockchain watermarked ballots in over 12 states have been part of a huge Trump and military white hat sting operation in 12 key battleground states. It says 12 a couple times, where 20,000 plus National Guard were deployed. Biden crime family, you've heard that before. Biden crime family and ballot fraud co conspirators, elected officials, bureaucrats, social media censorship mongers. 
fake stream media reporters, et cetera, are being arrested and detained for ballot fraud right now and over coming days and will be living in barges off Gitmo to face military tribunals for sedition. Now, I want to break this down while we talk about, you know, bizarre conspiratorial beliefs. And we know if you do want to read my book, The Breach, I talk about her background and the fact is she was caught up in cults before. So she's susceptible. The issue about this is where she's getting her information, and it's from a crazy guy named Steve Pachenik. Now, it seems that this person had a, a bit of a, I would say, normal military or intelligence community career. I uh, actually wrote some books with Tom Clancy. So it seems like maybe earlier, maybe he wasn't as, I would say, involved with insanity or crazy like he was now, but it was Dr. Steve, or Director Steve Pachenik that came up with this QFS blockchain nonsense. And he first sort of revealed this on the, with Owen Schroyer on InfoWars. Now, this is individual. When I talk about Jenny Thomas's susceptibility to certain beliefs, Steve Pachenik actually thought that 9-11 was an inside job, which, you know, maybe sort of like Vivek Ramaswamy and Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, but also thought that the Sandy Hook shooting um, was also faked or had crisis actors or something of that nature, a false flag. And he was almost too crazy for Alex Jones because he said that the 60 people, I believe, killed in Texas, if I remember correctly, that had also was fake to the point where I don't think Alex Jones thought that he should be on for a while because he even went too far for Alex Jones. The reason I want to say this, I'm emphasizing this, is because this is who Jenny Thomas is quoting to Mark Meadows about the stolen election. And if you go back through the text, you can see that all of this is sort of layered with all of the QAnon fantasy-based conspiratorial tripe that started just months after the Comet Ping Pong shooting. That's right. It's QAnon. So the wife of the sitting Supreme Court justice is sending this type of tripe to Mark Meadows, who's the chief of staff to the president, right next to the president. Now, we also know that she had contact or she had specific contact with Jared Kushner, talked about emailing Jared Kushner, and also knows that she had access to the president. So after that, you're thinking, well, it couldn't get much crazier. But we're also saying not only this QAnon bent or conspiratorial bent, or she's getting information from people who might be insane or definitely can't tell the difference between fact and fiction. You know, those people who, you know, think Lord of the Rings is a documentary. We see her November 6th text to Mark Meadows, which says, do not concede. It takes time for the army who is gathering for his back. That's exactly the quote. Do not concede. It takes time for the army who is gathering for his back. Now, some people could say, well, she's obviously referring to a spiritual army, which again, we know that she's very religious, very evangelical, which that's the other part that I'd like to discuss at some point, which is the Christian nationalism bent that we have through a lot of these texts, especially how Mark Meadows responds at times. But we're talking, we're talking about an army. We're also talking about something physical, or we're talking about was there implied violence? Now, I can't see into people's heart, but that right there suggests to me on November 6, 2020, that Virginia Thomas or Jenny is completely bought into the conspiracy theories that they have to fight based on the fact that the election was stolen, whether I would say it's by QFS watermark blockchain ballots or Italian satellites or broken algorithms. Now we know later on, and I'll get into these texts in part two, because this is really part one or I'd be here forever. We know that she refers to her support for Sidney Powell and the Kraken. And we know all that's involved with that, with all the bizarre legal arguments that were lost over and over again, because it was you know, really ludicrous. Now, November 10th, she sends one more text, or she sends a couple of texts on November 10th, but the one I really want to talk about is the one that she sends where there's a small free text thread where she says, Mark, I want to text you and tell you for days you're in my prayers. I hear from Nancy Schultz you're working through, and in question mark, listen to Rush, Rush Limbaugh, Mark Stein, Bongino, Dan, Cleta, Mitchell, and know the grassroots wants truth to prevail over lies. Help this great president stand firm, Mark. The left tastes their power. Now she says that in the text. The left tastes their power. You are the leader, speaking to Mark, with him, Donald Trump, who is standing for America's constitutional governance at, governance at the precipice. The majority knows Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist of our history. This is November 10th. Now, from November 5th to 10th, you know, and let's we'll say November 3rd to 10th, you have this thread. Now, Meadows actually did reply to Jenny. He said, I will stand firm. We will fight until there is no fight left. Our country is too precious to give up on. Thanks for all you do. Thomas replied back, tearing up and praying for you guys. So proud to know you. 
you're sensing a theme. Now, this is just the first week. It's the first week of texts. So you're talking about total, you're talking about one, two, three, five text messages, three from Jenny, or four from Jenny, one from Meadows, back to Jenny. Talking about the most bizarre conspiracy theories and the fact that it seemed that it's God willed or God ordained to continue the fight. High priestess of the GOP, high priestess of QAnon. For us to think that Clarence Thomas had no idea that Jenny Thomas was involved in this type of nonsense almost defies any type of imagination. I said before, whoever you're spooning with is who you're talking with. Now, that's just the truth. If they've been married for that long, and Jenny does actually talk about in the text messages that she discusses these issues with her best friend, which she, during her interview by the January 6th committee, admits that her best friend is Clarence Thomas. People need to read that, even though it wasn't under oath. Uh, which doesn't make me very happy. It should have been under oath and recorded. I do very much believe at this point that Clarence Thomas did know because I'm not an idiot. Even if we suggest that he didn't know, that also says that maybe he doesn't have the judgment or the forethought to think that maybe his spouse is engaged in activities that are at least unethical. So as we go forward, we need to ask questions. These questions are very simple. Did all, I mean, honestly, were all three branches of the government involved in the coup-like activities from January 6th? And the other question you know, that I always ask is, at what point do we, do we have an ethical breakdown so dire that we have to address it right now? And I believe we're to that point. We've been to that point for a few years now. So again, I really do appreciate everybody listening in today. And I want you to take into consideration this, is that text messages or how people talk to other people sometimes – is a very good indicator of actually how they feel. Now, I may be understanding it, but people who self-identify, you should listen to. We're not making things up. I don't have to. It's in the data. It's right here in black and white in the text messages, and everybody should revisit them and actually ask yourself, what did Clarence and Jenny actually do, and what did they know during this whole Stop the Steal fiasco in January 6th? Thank you. Everybody have a great night. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.